We are at the Akarola Wilderness Retreat Camp thing. It's about 140 k's east of the main road um, near Lindhurst. Yeah, sort of a bit south and a bit, uh, bit east of there. Anyway, we sort of came here on a whim, not really knowing what to expect, and it's got a real sort of school camp vibe about it. Um, anyway, we're going to do a walk today, the Acacia Ridge Walk. You can probably tell from what we're wearing, it's a little bit cooler than what we're used to. Today's a very cloudy day, which kind of sucks, but maybe it'll be a nice change from being sweltering hot. And at least there's no flies either yet. Yeah. Um, we came here with the intention of doing some observatory tours, but failed yeah. to remember that it's a new moon. So Full moon. <laughs> Full, Full moon. moon. New moon would be perfect. All right. Yeah. Anyway, let's go. Bit of a climb there. I'm gonna have to take the vest off. Not a difficult path, but uh, yeah, it was a bit steep to start with. <clears throat> we we're just saying the um, signs on this path are really good. Gives you regular updates of how far you've got to go, which is good for morale. Keep spirits up. Four k's to go. Pretty useful. Don't know, but it started at, it's got 1.2 k's if you're going the other way, so, yeah. We're still going up, and it got too warm for the vest, so had a little bit of a break. I changed out of that. And now the sun's out, and it's warm. Still no flies, oh, well, there's been a couple. I'm sure the rest of them will turn up soon. Now that the sun's come out, it actually looks really awesome. It's kind of bleak earlier. But this landscape's really good. Good. Impressive. I don't know what the right word is. Picturesque. According to the Garmin, we've climbed about 180 meters, I think. Uh, so it's like we're on top of like the first major peak. The view up here is pretty awesome. Hopefully, uh, GoPro can capture it. Pretty crazy because we've just been in like flatness for thousands of kilometers, you know, with the occasional sort of bump like Uluru and the Olgas and stuff. But other than that, it's been really flat for ages. So it's kind of crazy to just be surrounded by mountains again. The view from the top was pretty cool. It wasn't too different to uh, a little bit further down though, but I mean, you know, if you've made it this far, you might as well go all the way, right? That was cool. I'm gonna go for a bit of a walk back down the hill now. Sonia just met a lizard. What do you reckon about the walk, Sonia? Do you think it was uh, worthwhile? a different landscape to what we've been seeing and it's quite picturesque but it's just a bit cold to start with. Yeah it was a bit and cold to start with. I've gotten with. a bit precious. She has gotten a bit precious. But no, it was good. Um, definitely worth doing and now that the sun's out it looks beautiful. It was kind of grey and cloudy before it didn't look that great but yeah it's really really quite awesome now. Yeah well worth doing. Good work Akarula Wilderness Retreat realized that Sonia walks ahead of me and as she walks past these ant holes all the ants come flying out real pissed off and then I have to walk through them and they're real angry. 
The drive in to Akarula was pretty good, except for the last bit. There's quite a lot of up and down and therefore it got quite corrugated. So we're just walking back along that road now. Give you a look. But there's two wheel drive cars in here and stuff, so it's not that bad. But yeah, it's just a bit tough when you lose your momentum and just get stuck in the corrugation hell. Pretty much as soon as we finished the track and got onto the road, we just got annihilated by flies. It's kind of weird because there's just not that many flies on the path. But there's heaps down here. So yeah, it's a bit of a downer. It was nice to not have to wear a fly net for a while. So it was just over four k's back. Uh, we're nearly there. It wasn't too bad walking along the road. We had a few cars go past us, which is a bit of shit, but luckily they can't really go fast enough on this road to kick up too much dust. So yeah, a lot shorter than going back the same route that we came. A lot easier too, although quite a lot up and down. Anyway, you probably don't really care about that, do you? Yeah. At Akarula. Yeah. I thought we'd go for a little drive. We've got to be back in time to watch the Wallabies, though. And not the rugby team. No. The actual Wallabies. Yellow-footed rock Wallabies, you see. This has been fun. It's quite picturesque in here, actually. Little adventure. Yeah. Probably left it a little bit late in the day to go, but we had lots of other stuff to do. That work walk earlier this morning, and then I had to cut my hair. It was getting a bit unruly, and Sonia did the washing, so just too busy to do all the fun for the driving. Not now, though. No, we're fine time. In small cavities, you know, uh, about six or eight inches in, uh, around. Uh, they sit with their tail up in front between their legs. The young ones stay there after they come out of the pouch at three, three and a half months. Within five to ten days of their first outing from the pouch, they never go back into the pouch. Oh. Unlike kangaroos, oh. they come out at about the same age. There we go. There we go. He's, he's a bit small. He's oh, a tiny. Not much more than a teenager. There we go. One here. There's two more down there. He's on the rocks now. Yeah, there's two more down there, too. Are there? We couldn't find the back cave either. Oh, we haven't seen one of these for ages. One of my personal faves. Scare off the road. Come on, buddy. Off you go. You go? Yeah, nice. No, You're kind of off the road. Come on, buddy. We're in the town of Blinman and we just did the Blinman copper mine tour. Didn't really get a ton of good footage in there because it's pretty dark, but we'll see if we can splice some in. It was 35 bucks, and initially I thought, oh, 35 bucks, but it was definitely worth it. It was really informative, quite enjoyable. One woman didn't really dig the vibe, so she bailed. I think she was freaking out about being underground. But I will say this, it is cold in there, so don't just wear a t-shirt like we did. Mm, and it's all run by volunteers. Yeah, it's all volunteers. The whole vibe of this town's like quite volunteer driven. Just devil. Yeah, just trying to. So anyway, now that we've had a little snack and warmed up a bit, we're gonna do 
the walk around the outside of the mine, uh, which they say allow an hour, but I reckon that's just for old people. Probably can't make it out, but that slag pile um, is made up of lots of little, uh, well, large chunklets that resemble the shape of the slag trolley. Pretty awesome. We're on top of the slag pile now, and it looks to me like some of it was dumped while it was still liquid. So it's kind of like just run. Something that's pretty interesting about this mine is that when they got to about 90 metres, they hit water. Um, so currently the town extracts its water from the mine, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, apparently it doesn't taste very good, but it's good for washing and, you know, those such things. Pretty huge hole in the ground. Yeah, it's a massive sort of operation. Um, when you think about how it was done, I, they had boys in there 14 years old working underground and younger boys working above ground. It's just like the scale of it and how they did it all with such limited technology. It's really impressive. I'm kind of sad too, I think. The guy was saying that the uh, average life expectancy of a miner was 35 years. Yeah, pretty tough existence. Found a um, point of interest on Wikicamps, uh, some mine ruins, I believe it's spelt or pronounced Nukalina. Anyway, that's them in the background. As soon as we come over the hill, I thought, I've seen them before on other people's YouTubes. So I was wondering whereabouts they were in the Flinders Ranges. So it's quite cool that we've seen me stumbled across them. So. We'll have a bit of a walk around and check it out. It was about a 30k drive out here, mostly pretty easy, and the last little bit was a bit, um, bit steep. Definitely needed a four-wheel drive for that, but most of it was pretty easy. Anyway, let's go have a look. Of construction. We were just remarking at how large this building is. It's quite an impressive structure and the blocks are enormous so it would have been a heck of a job trying to build this out here and we really are a long way from anywhere. That's the remains of a lot of dead animals. So I don't know what the deal is there, but I would suspect that maybe dingoes or wild dogs bring them in here. I mean, I can't imagine they just come in here to die voluntarily. That'd be weird. But check out this building. I don't know if, what kind of wood that is, but the guy at the uh, mine tour in Blimmin was telling us that the, uh, the native pines from this area are uh, resistant to termites. So that's pretty interesting. They can last for hundreds of years. Hey Michelle, check out these rocks. I don't know anything about this place. I don't know how old it is. 
I don't know what they mined here. Uh, so I'll try and find out. I'll add some notes. But it's pretty cool. It's just awesome to come to places like this that were built so long ago. I mean, if I were asked to build this now, I mean, with modern technology, I don't know if I'd be able to do as good a job. And people did it in the 1800s. Impressive. You know when glass is, glass is that thick, it's got to be old. More dead stuff. Who's this little guy? Actually, you're not so little, are you? Look how big you are. What are you doing on the road, mate? Hey, what are you doing on the road? The drive-in. Oh, here comes a car. Oh no. <laughs> We're at a fork of the road. Go left or right, Andrew? What's your thoughts? I think we came left, didn't we? We came left, which is that way. But right looks much easier right now. It does. You gotta go right. We're in the middle of nowhere. And I was just about to start recording. And literally some dudes came around the corner. And <laughs> they had to reverse out for us. and. Oh, it was just all a little bit of a pain in the butt. But they were good sports about it. But yeah, just have a look at the scenery. It's just amazing. Now we're driving in the creek bed. It's fun. Four wheel drive. Oh, steady shot will be ruining that. <laughs> Again, watch us, not the... <laughs> Do do. <laughs> oh, this bit looks a bit exciting. I feel sorry for the poor tyres. Yeah, that's all right. They're made for it. Justify the purchase, Andrew. Of the tyres? Of the of ute. the ute? Yeah. I'm happy with it. I'm glad we're not doing it in the Mazda 3. But we were just saying, you could probably do about 98% of our trip in an all-wheel drive, SUV, station wagon, whatever. There's actually not that many times when you really need a four-wheel drive. But when you do need it, it's good to have it. Yeah, and I think potentially that's the type of sort of touring versus four-wheel driving that yeah. we've, we've done mostly what we're comfortable with. Hmm. Off, a bit of off the bitumen, but not necessarily off road, so to speak, right? Yeah, but I mean, you know, we wouldn't have been able to come and check this out if we uh, hadn't had a four-wheel drive, so yeah, absolutely worth the $55,000. <laughs> check out how big that rule is. I have to get zoom in for you. Yeah. All right, so we're heading back towards our campsite now, and um, we come across this lookout on Wiki Camps. I think it's the Glass Gorge lookout. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, it would be drivable in a four-wheel drive, uh, and there is a turnaround area, but we decided to park at the bottom because we weren't sure if we we're going to be able to turn around. Anyway, the view is awesome. Have a look. Probably be pretty good at sunrise as well, I reckon. But anyway, beautiful. What does Sonia reckon? Yeah, it's pretty nice. Pretty nice. So this is the drive up. You can see it's pretty lumpy and steep. Walk it. <laughs> 